welcome back to our class today we're going to have a look at the for loop right the for loop is quite similar in fact it's very similar to the while it's just another way of doing loops so why do i uh, focus a bit more on the loops compared to the other topics in the programming because this is one of the basic skills that you must have in order for you to program something in order for you to offer a solution to a problem doing loops is one of the basic skills that you need to have so as usual you can go to any resources that you have to 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 learn a bit more about the loop uh, for four basically this is the structure if you can see here as opposed to a while loop you will need to do these things in separate uh, places but for four you can do it in all in one line so in a way four segment is a bit more is a bit more is a bit better because it allows you to do everything in one line so it doesn't uh, makes you forget to do things okay so right so for a for loop basically there's an initialization part there's a condition part and there's the increment part all in one line so you will not miss any part of it okay so this is this particular reference i'm using is at c++.com you are more than uh, uh, free to use the same reference or use a different reference and it has a example here for you to go through to get you up to speed with what the for loop looks like so this is the basic structure of a for loop as you can see it starts with a for and with a bracket and within the bracket starts with an integer with a number that you initialize with for this particular example they declare the variable inside the statement which is which can be done but i don't normally use this style remember you always declare your variable at the top here yeah before using namespace line but coming back to the for loop next you have the condition line where you will need to test when will the loop ends okay and it will end when it reaches zero or it reaches less than zero so for this particular example they want to do it by decrement so it will decrease n by one and this is another way of saying that you're decrementing the value de decreasing the value by one uh, starting from 10 okay if you need more explanation for this and more explanation in fact for loop is a bit special because there are so many other properties that you can use it for uh, you can jump you can break you can continue you can go to but let me let let me tell you that i will not be using all those other properties of the for loop i will use the basic structure of for loop but what i will focus on would be on how you use it to solve the problem so the focus here is not so much on how to use a loop but the focus is on to understand the question understand the problem and offer a solution using the loop okay let's have a look at the example that i've uh, prepared for you for the first one uh, i would like to ask you to display odd numbers between 100 and 110 using the for loop all right so let's do this and while doing so while doing so we'll see how uh, each of the for loop means okay so let's straight away go to your favorite editor be it online or offline start with the statement open the bracket and if you're using the same IDE like mine, I will normally type in the curly bracket straight away and press enter so that you have a set of curly bracket for you to work on. So now all you have to do is write the statement inside and the conditions for for is here. Okay, so you won't miss out any uh, symbols for it to run smoothly. Right. So for the integer, normally I use I. Yeah starts with at 100 and as long as the i is less than or equal to 110 
and you want to increase the counter or I by one right so this is how I normally do it normally I, I still will use I and then only then I will declare it out here integer I okay, so that you won't uh, miss it so remember the question now I will not type it uh, yet before I explain this thing okay explain the question right you notice in the question that it asks you to write the odd numbers between a certain range of number right although by now I hope you know how to test for even or odd number but you don't necessarily have to use the same way to do certain problems okay just because it asks you to get the odd numbers doesn't mean that you have to test all the numbers okay let me show you what I mean right so between 100 and 110 the odd numbers is starts with 101 and it ends at 109 correct so you can increment it by 2 right so you don't have to actually test all numbers to actually get uh, the answers Have you seen what I've done here? So what I basically do is loop between 101 and it stops at 109 and I increment it by 2. So basically it goes from 101, 103, 105, 107, 109. Okay, so you don't have to actually test for each number whether it's an even or odd number. Okay. So let's run it and see if you're correct. There you go. 101, 3, 5, 7, 9. Well done. So again, what I'm trying to show you here is that just because the question asks you to display odd numbers or even numbers, you know that you have to use the loop. You don't necessarily have to test for each number. Okay. Of course, certain questions will ask you to test each of the iteration of numbers. But depending on the question, you don't actually have to, okay? I, I intentionally stress this because I want, you, I want to help you during answering the exam questions or test exams because time is limited. So spend some time understanding question. Don't just jump straight into answering the question yeah? because you might waste precious time typing out the solution because it might get complicated just because you think there's only one way to do the question okay so let's get back to the um, uh, to the other question the second exercise is to write the program that is determine the factorial of an integer entered by the user okay so you ask the user to enter an integer and you find the factorial value of that integer okay let's do this we go back to our uh, yeah before I forgot uh, as usual copy this and save it in your uh, text editor right going back to the question uh, finding the factorial I hope by now you understand what factorial means if not you can just google it okay so what factorial means is uh, basically if you have a number uh, the factorial is basically the multiplication of that number until 1 okay if you enter number 4 it's 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 okay all right coming back to the second example of uh, sorry not second example but second exercise of this topic uh, we would like to for you to ask the user to enter uh, an integer and you help the user to find the factorial for that uh, number okay right so as usual start with the question to to ask the user to enter a number always start with please okay it's a, a common courteous uh, it's common courtesy for you to say please every time you want to ask something from uh, somebody okay please enter an integer All right so that you're a bit specific about it so so that the user will not 
into some strange uh, big numbers or decimal numbers right so you already have uh, using i as an integer so i'm going going to use i in this example right so remember so whenever we ask for somebody to enter a number so it comes in, in pairs uh, you ask the question in c out you get the number with c in okay so now you want to find the factorial of that number okay so before i start so let's revisit the definition of factorial which is the mul multiplication of numbers with between the number and one yeah all right so everybody agree with that so since i've used i at the top so normally the second option i can only use j uh, j equals i uh, and j is still bigger than or equal to zero sorry just bigger than zero okay otherwise anything times zero is zero so we don't want that so we decrement j by one yeah okay. plus sorry not plus but minus one i'll put that value come on um right so we want the product ah, now that's the word the multiplication of each number is the product okay so the product is so you can call it a for answer okay sometimes i use a for answer so you can declare it a at the top don't forget to do that so a equals a times j all right so why don't we use i because i is now the limit to the loop so we don't use i in the equation all right so what this loop does is that uh, for every iteration of the number j which follows uh, starts with i and then it decrements by 1 starts with whatever number and then it multiplies with the number uh, before that okay so for that you have to initialize a so because a can be can have a value of course uh, a is just a space in the memory of a computer but you can never tell so as a good practice you always initialize the answer okay okay this is uh, one tip that i need you to remember if you want to find the total always initialize with zero but if you want to find the product always initialize with one okay don't initialize with zero because if you want to find a product anything multiplied by zero will be zero so you get the wrong answer right so just to make it complete uh, create another c out statement just to tell the answer okay the value of okay just to make it nice nice looking okay so we print the number k okay, which we have stored in i why do i show you this why am i showing you this because uh, in the exam or test these little things uh, will make your program complete and that is how i give you full mark okay if you make your program complete uh, little things like uh, to display the answer of this you know uh, and you will displaying the number again i will consider this as a as a complete answer to the question so i'll give you full mark for this okay if you leave this one out you will still pass the question you will still get the answer uh, you will still get the answer correct but you won't get the full mark okay so for those of you who are targeting a plus for this make sure you do these little things okay this right so the answer you put it here the answer is in a all right and also don't forget to make it in a new line so that it appears nice okay so these little things means a lot for you if you're planning to get a plus all right so let's have a look i always test with number five because i know the factorial of five is 120 value of 100 is 120 correct 
So you can always test it again with other numbers. Make sure you know what the answer is or you can always use your calculator to test. For example, 4 factorial. Of course, you know what 4 factorial is, which is 24. Right, so you're all good. So as usual, copy uh, your program so that you won't lose it and save it in your text editor. And before I end this topic, let's have a look if I have a homework for you as usual. Write a program of, to find the sum of digits of a given non-negative integer. Alright? What it means is that if somebody enters a number like this, 2, 3, 5 and 6, I want you to write a program that finds the sum of 2 plus 3 plus 5 plus 6. Okay, the sum of... 2, 3, 5, 6 is 16 Okay, because 2 plus 3 is 5 5 plus 5 is 10 10 plus 6 is 16 And uh, if you don't think that's challenging enough I've already compiled uh, a list Not me, but other people have compiled a list For you to do uh, all these examples using loop So The questions are in w3resource.com So you can try all 87 exercises if you wish but if not just have a look at few and the good thing about this list is that there is a sample solution to it so if you click at the link it will give you a sample solution so you can learn from there all right and there's also an editor at the bottom so you can also test your program here okay so that's it for now thank you for watching and happy coding Thank you.